Okay, our, our first fullest session is going to be on how to disciple a young person. So this is the, this is the practical on the ground, how do we do it, and think about how the Bible tells us uh, to disciple uh, each other. Now, uh, the, let me just say, I'm going to be using the word discipling. So I want you to disciple another young person. Now, the thing is that when you use the word discipling, people start to get a little bit nervous and think, oh, what are you asking me to do? And I'm not quite sure about this. And, uh, and so in my experience as a, as a chaplain and as a diocesan worker, I just have so many girls who, who say, can, can we talk? Can you, we, we meet? And, and there, are t there are just too many. So what do I obviously do? I go to some of the older women in our community and say, Will you disciple this young girl? Because I've got no more gaps in my week to do this. And the answer I always get is, no, I couldn't do that. No, I couldn't do that. And uh, so let me just say right away, uh, let me give you a definition of discipling. Discipling is simply teaching someone to follow Jesus as you follow Jesus. So that's your primary goal. You have this young person in front of you and you want to teach them to follow Jesus and you know how to do that because you follow Jesus. So you get things wrong and you're not quite sure and all that sort of stuff, uh, but that's essentially what we're trying to do. Uh, now, but to kick us off, what I want us to do, I want you to imagine that an angel from the Lord appears in the room right now and says, Whatever you pray for the young people in your church, in your family, in your community, God's going to answer it. So here's your question. Uh, what are you going to ask God for? And, and more importantly, if God answers your prayers, what will the young people look like? So let me give you an example. The young people are going to be uh, really passionate about being you know, open about their faith. That's one example. So I want you to share with the people next to you, uh, what do you want the young people to look like? How, how do you want God to answer your prayers? So I'm going to just give you a few seconds to talk to each other. What do you want the young people to be like in your church and families and everywhere? So, okay, let's hear it. What do we want the young people to be like? How do we want God to answer our prayers? Let's, let's hear it. Yes. Yeah, they, they own their faith and they're active members of their church. That's fantastic, yeah. What else do you want? Have a knowledge of God and who they are in God. Yes, have a knowledge of God and who they are in God. Fantastic. Excited about sharing and comfortable with sharing. Yes, yes, Fantastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it's very possible. Yeah. I'd like them to, to show more of the truth and not a sliding scale. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you give them some good, so they'll have these good values that are from Scripture. Yeah. That they are valuable to the body of Christ. Yes, and that, and that, that meeting with God's people is a priority for them. Uh, they, they put down their hockey sticks and, and put down their musical instruments and say, the church is on. Any last takers? Okay, well that, that is a, that's a really good list. Like, and, and here's the thing, it's really possible. When you look at some of the stories of young people in the scriptures, there's some amazing young people in the scripture. You think about Daniel, who was probably 14 years old, and he and his friends are uplifted and taken to Babylon, which is Iraq, and said, you're not speaking your language anymore. You're not going to use your name. You're not going to eat the same food. They were, young, they were junior high kids, very likely. And, and the example and how God used them. And this is, this is very doable for our people in this generation as well. And, and, and God is at work in doing this. Now, uh, I want to just refer to a, a, a verse in the book of Judges. And it's one of these really tragic verses. And, and you read it and you go, oh, this is a tragic verse. But then you start to realize, gosh, this is, this is kind of a thing that happens in the scriptures. 
Now, what, where, what the context is, is Joshua has gone into the promised land. He has conquered the promised land. Walls of Jericho march around, fallen down, you know, all this sort of stuff. Really kind of amazing. God has just paved the way and, and they are now in the promised land. God has kept his promise to Abraham. But what happens? Joshua dies. And the very next thing that happens when Joshua dies, after that, uh, so after that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. Like the, the very next generation, they didn't know that the walls of Jericho fell down. Like they didn't know that story. Like, wouldn't their parents have <coughs> told them that story? And here we have this picture uh, of, of the faith was not passed on. And in one generation, it was gone. And let me just tell you, uh, in, in Canada, Australia is a secular country. When I moved to Canada, I felt like I'd moved from a Christian country in comparison. And, and I'm told that in like a generation and a half, Canada went from very Christian to nothing. And, and it's, it's so, it was so rapid, it's traceable, you can, you know, plot it. Uh, it's, this, is, this is not just at the time of Joshua, this is our generation, this is our time. And, and we are the ones right now that have the stories to pass on, and it falls on our shoulders. Now, uh, the history of God's people is one of forgetfulness, and the reason why we're here today is we are not going to let that happen to the next generation. And, and that's why, and, and, and we're all so excited to have you here to, to make this decision that this is actually really important and we're going to do this. Now, um, uh, I th think about the, 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 the things you're going to pray for and ask God to do. Uh, Lord, I want the young people to be like this. Well, ultimately, we are going to be his hands and feet in this because he, he's only going to do this through us. And so if we want the young people to be really committed to church, we've got to help them be really committed to church. If we want them to know the scriptures, we've got to teach them the scriptures. We're going to be the people who are going to do this. Now, can, can I just have a show of hands? Who was at the Dyson Convention when this was uh, advertised? Okay, so quite a few of you. Okay, that's great. Uh, I'm just going to show uh, a video now that was shown at the Dyson Convention. And it's a video of a young woman called Jill who was actually discipled and, and, and talks about her experience of it. And as you listen to her, I want you to imagine there, there's a young person out there who is thinking, is there anyone who actually cares about me or cares about what's going on and wants to do anything with me? And, then, and I want you to listen to what Jill says about her experience of this. Um, I, 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 I always get choked up when I, when I watch that video. It's just, it's so moving to hear her talk about, this is just, I need this. And, and there are so many young people out there that, that have, have no one. And there was one expert recently who talked about, talked about hurting kids and all the, the difficulties that they go through alone. And they said, the fact of the matter is there are just not enough adults for the number of kids out there that need us. And so um, that's why today is so important. Now, uh, when we think about, uh, you know, discipling, as I said, it can be intimidating and we're not sure and is it, how's it going to work? And even Jill says, I didn't know how it was going to work when we first started doing this. Um, and, and, but what do we do when we think, I know God wants me to do this. I, I know that his word tells me to do this. But I'm not completely confident about it and I'm not sure how to do it. So, so the obvious place to, for us to go when, when that's the scenario, we know God wants us, is to look at what the scriptures teach us. And so on your notes, I've picked out an example of, uh, oh, wait, sorry, wait. Uh, before we do that, uh, sorry, yes. Uh, I just wanted to, actually, I wanted to share, I want us to share some reasons about uh, discipling ourselves. So uh, I want you to imagine someone's approached you and said, will you disciple this young person? I want you to think, I want you to share with me what are some of the reasons why people say that they won't do it? So uh, there, are often, there are often more than one reason why they say no. It's not just that they're too busy to do it. Uh, but let, let's hear, what are some of the reasons why people say, I don't know if that should be me. I don't know enough. 
Yes, oh my goodness. I don't know enough. That, that is a really common one. Now, let me tell you, this, this week I had a, a priest call me uh, from a parish and said, look, we've got a, a young per one young person in our church. And this young man's asking all these questions. What are we supposed to do with him, like this one kid? And so I explained about this, you know, have someone meet with him, disciple him. And, and this person said, well, I've got to tell you that I know what they're going to say. They're going to say, I just don't know enough. I just don't know enough to answer this young, this young man's questions are pretty deep. The young man's nine. <laughs> he's, he's nine. And uh, so, so, like, we really feel that one. We really go, oh, I don't know enough. We're too frightened to answer a nine-year-old's questions about the faith. Yeah. We don't understand them. Yeah. Okay, yes. You know, uh, you know, you go up to, you know, you have the experience, you go up to a young person, you say hi, and, you know, the typical, uh, how are you, good? You, what would you do this week? Nothing. Uh, how's school? <laughs> Fine. And, and we go, okay, they don't want to talk to me. They hate this conversation. Uh, and, and quite often that's not what they're thinking in their head. They're thinking, this is really great that an uh, older person's talking to me, but I don't know what to do and I don't know what to say. And they're as nervous as, as you are. Here's the thing. One person said to me, one young person said, oh, it's so great when an older person meets with us like this. How is it supposed to work? Are the young people supposed to go up to the older people and say, will you do this for me? And I said, no, no. It's the older person's job to pass the faith on to you. It's our job to go up and for us to say, if they're uncomfortable, you know, sorry, if I'm uncomfortable, that's okay. I'm the adult. You know, I'm, I'm the one who's, who's had more experience at this than, than they have. Uh, and, and a lot of the time we just say, we just have to get over it. And we just have to give it a shot. Think of the young people at your church on Sunday. Go up and say hello to them. And I don't care if they're awkward or, or whatever. And what you might find is they're actually more excited about you doing that than you actually think. Thank you. That's, that's, that's great. Yes? I don't understand. I just don't understand teenagers. Yeah. Okay, yes. I don't understand them. And, uh, you know, and here's the thing. You don't, you know, uh, I think about some of the people that, have discipled younger people. I asked this woman to lead a girls' Bible study with me. She was 70. And she said, oh, no, sorry, she was 60 at the time. And I said, will you do this? She said, oh, I'm too old. You know? and, uh, and I said, I was, I was in my 30s at the time. And I said, Anita, the kids can't tell the difference between you and me. <laughs> like, and, and the first week, uh, Anita went, she really liked it, and she said, you know, um, uh, I was worried about doing this because I, I thought, oh, I'm too old to do this. And the girl said, oh, but Julie's old too. <laughs> and so, and so they, they, you know, if you're 21 and older, well, then you're old. Or you're 21, if you're older and if you're 25 and married, you're old. Uh, so, yes. And so, so Anita, she was, you know, she's, you know, close to 70 now and she still sees these girls and she is in a completely different world to them. But when you're in a different world to someone, it gives you an opportunity to ask them, tell me about this and tell me about that and tell me about this. One of the best things you can ask a young person when you think, I don't know how to talk with them, is just tell me, tell me about that, tell me about, if they say something, you know, you don't understand, tell me about that. And they will, they'll tell you about it. <coughs> Any other last reasons that people say, no, I can't do that. Oh, I don't have time. Yes. That's the worst excuse, I think. Um, young people know that their parents are too busy and that adults are too busy for them. They know that. And what do they do? They, they, they mimic it. My husband was at church and uh, says to this young person, you know, how, how's your week? And they said, oh, I'm very busy. Well, where did they learn that? You know, where did they learn that expression? And Ken said to the young person, but you're five. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, playing with blocks, you know, why are you so busy? Like, it really is, that we, we have got to get that word out of our vocabulary, out of our churches. Uh, my husband and I, 15 years ago, 
made a decision to never use that word ever again. When people say, how are you doing? I'm fine. Never say you're busy. That's just, if, if I meet you and, and you say I'm busy, well, I'm not going to say, well, let's go out for coffee. I'm going to say, oh, well, they're too busy. Uh, it's, a, it's a relationship killer. Yeah, that is the worst. That's the worst. You can get over all the others. That's the worst. A any last? I've got one more I want to add to it, but... Yes? They're a bad kid. <laughs> <laughs> They're a bad kid. Yes, yes. There are bad kids. Uh, but sometimes those bad kids can become good kids. So... Yeah. And I think the barrier sometimes can be that if they open up, they're going to be assessed and mm. measured. Yeah. And that's a relationship killer as well. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's really important uh, that when a young person tells you anything, that you never register shock to what they say. I've heard some outrageous things over the years, unbelievable things. Uh, the last thing they need to see is this look on your face of, oh my goodness. You did that. Um, uh, we all know as adults, there's a lot of bad things we can do. So um, we're not exempt. Uh, but yes, thank you. Well, let me add la one last one. And that was... Uh, oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, we don't know ourselves how to handle the society that they're living in. Okay, yeah. And so that's a little bit of the... the uh, not understanding teenagers, really, their world and... Um, yeah. Um, dealing with questions and issues that we ourselves haven't spent enough time thinking about the answers to. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, one of the best things, and I'll, I might mention it again, but one of the best things you can say when a young person asks you a question and you don't know the answer, you say, I don't know. I don't know, but I will find out for you. Or I don't know, but I'll, I'll have a think about it. I'll, I don't know, I'm going to search the scriptures. Um, it's okay not to be the expert. It's okay. Uh, for those of you who are parents, uh, when you got your first child, you didn't know what to do. And so it's a similar, it's a similar kind of thing. You know, you give it a shot and you learn as you go. And you're going to make mistakes like you do as a parent, but you give it a shot and you don't give up. The last one I want to add is, uh, and this is, this is a real indictment on our generation is that a lot of us here would say, you know what, no one discipled me, so I don't know how to do it for another person. So we are, we are a product of generational lack of discipleship. And, and here's the thing, we've got to stop that. We've got to, we've got to break that cycle. And we can't have the next generation say, I, I was never discipled. And so you were never discipled, so make sure that that the next generation can't say that. Uh, and, and again, you might know, not know what to do, but this is what God wants us to do. He has given us his word and he's going to help us to do it. And so it's actually okay to say, you know what, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm going to kind of bumble my way through this, but I'm going to, I'm going to give it a shot because this is so important. It's, it's, for some of us, it's going to be, there's not going to be one thing in our week that is more important than doing that one, one and a half hours with a young person. Um, okay, so, so again, let me repeat myself. Uh, what do we do when we know God wants us to do it and we don't know how to do it? We turn to his word. Uh, so on, on your, your handout, I have some verses and it's the example of Paul and Timothy. And what I'm going to get you to do is have a very short time of Bible study with each other. And again, we can't give you a lot of time, unfortunately. Uh, but I want you to look at the Bible passages, and I'm going to put them up here on the screen. That's a little bit hard to read, but here they all are together. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to look at uh, Paul takes Timothy and he disciples him. And, uh, and there are some things in there, some principles I want you to work out. What, what were the principles behind what Paul did for Timothy? And then I want you to work out, how do we do that with a young person? Okay, so I, what I'd ask you to do is just, you know, bunch up in some pairs, triplets, little groups, tables. If, you're, if you came in a little team, you might want to do it as a team. Uh, 
and I'll give you, Stephen, how long can I give them? How much time do I have left? Ages? Ages? Okay, good. Okay, maximum 10 minutes to look at uh, the example of Paul and Timothy. So read the passages and then work out those two questions on your sheet. Okay, I hope there were some really... Uh, I hope there are some really helpful things that you could see in the example of, of Paul and Timothy. There's some really great uh, things in that picture of that, that relationship. Uh, what are we, what are gonna do, I'm going to just go through some of the uh, principles that we need to be thinking about when we are meeting with a young person from Paul and Timothy. And, uh, and then if there's any you want to add, then um, please do. So to kick off, uh, the, some of the principles we can take from them. One of the <coughs> first ones I pull out is uh, we need to teach the scriptures. Paul very clearly taught the scriptures to Timothy. You look at the last two verses, uh, the two Second Timothy passages. Uh, uh, it was a it was a, a focus of Paul, and you can imagine that that was that was just the central piece for Paul in meeting with with Timothy. The second thing is we need to teach in the context of relationship. Um, we, you get to know the people you disciple. It's, it, and you should get to know the people you disciple. It's a natural progression. And you look at the, the depth of the relationship that comes out of Paul and Timothy. Paul refers to him as his true son in the faith, the son whom he loves. And, and it's not as though Timothy didn't have a dad. He had a dad who was not a believer. He was a Greek. And, uh, but Paul had this special spiritual uh, uh, father relationship with Timothy. And... and you know, I think about some of the girls that I've discipled. I'm now 50, and there are girls who are now mothers themselves. One of, one of the girls that I've discipled has just had her third child, and they've grown up. And it's this really wonderful thing to look back and say, I still see them, and, uh, and we still have a relationship, because as we gathered around the scriptures, that just naturally develops a deep <coughs> relationship. Uh, second thing, a uh, third thing, uh, Here's kind of a key one these days is don't overlook people from strong Christian backgrounds. This is what churches often do. Okay, I'm looking for someone to disciple. Oh, well, that person has Christian parents. Don't worry about them. That person goes to Christian school. Don't worry about them. That person is already showing that they're committed to Christianity. Don't worry about them. And quite often, no one is worrying about them. They're being bullied at school and no one knows they're being bullied at school. Uh, but what is... What does Paul do? The believers, Timothy had been raised by his mother and grandmother. They did a great job because when Paul goes to that town, they say, have you seen Timothy? You've got to meet Timothy. He is this outstanding young man. So Paul goes and meets Timothy, who'd been raised in a, a, a good family and solid teaching. I'm going to invest in this young man. And so what, what the church often does to our peril is we, we see the, the group of Christian kids here who seem to, they, they're showing up on Sunday. So we just push them to the side and we look for someone else. And we look for, well, where are their non-Christian friends? Uh, and we just neglect the ones that are sitting right in, right in front of us. And it's, it's actually, it's, it's, it's terrible it's, it, that we let our own, our own children in our churches be neglected. Uh, there's a pattern of imitation. Uh, Paul sets an example for Timothy and Timothy follows his example. In 1 Corinthians 11.1, 1, Paul says to the Corinthian church, follow my example as I follow Christ. In other words, be like me. Be a Christian like me. Live your life like me. And, and you know you, you, you pour into a young person's life and they do naturally imitate everything about you. So you've got to be thinking, well, I really have to have my act together. I can't just skip out on church when I feel like it. And I can't, you know, be on my phone all the time. And I can't be doing all the things that, that set, a, set a bad example. Uh, we, sometimes we end up doing ministry with a person we disciple. So in the Philippians passage, um, he, he talks about uh, he does work with someone who's like a father pro, uh, 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 approved um Sorry, he, 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 because as a son, he, oh, I've got it all messed up. Timothy has proved himself because as a son with his father, he served with me in the work of the gospel. So you might actually be discipling someone and you think, you know, this person, this person really does love the Lord. And I, 
I think they'd be great as a Sunday school teacher and I'm teaching Sunday school and so I'm going to make them a co-leader co with me. Or you might say, you know, I want you to go on and do this with someone else. So you disciple that person and while you're doing that, I'll continue to pour into your life. And you might end up being on, you might go to a, a summer camp together and do a week of, of cabin leading together. It's all sorts of things you could do, but you, you may find that you naturally start to do ministry with them as well as they grow. Uh, and the last one, an end result of discipleship may be that the person is equipped to teach and disciple others. And in the, in the end, that's kind of a little bit of a goal of that, that we pass on the faith so that the next generation can pass on the faith. I pray all the time for the generation that I'm working with in Canada and I pray, Lord, please help us to pass the faith on, raise up workers for this incredibly ripe harvest. Uh, and then they can worry about the generations after that. Now, we're going to stick to our notes from this point on. Uh, so the, the, the notes you have are fairly comprehensive, may, mainly because I want you to be able to take this away and look through it and, and remind yourself of, of, of how you're going to do this. As Dave said, the whole principle revolves around meeting with someone to talk to them, to study the Bible with them and to pray with them. That's, that's what you're going to do when you get together. So I'm just going to go through each one of those, uh, starting with the talk. Now, I have some, some time limits next to them. They're kind of guidelines. Uh, it, it gets, you know, when you're meeting with someone, the, the, the time kind of gets messed up. Uh, they're just guidelines. You don't have to say, okay, we've talked for 30 minutes, we've got to stop. Uh, or, or you might find that, you know, you've got to talk for 30 minutes and you've finished after 10 and you're trying to pull out more information. Um, so they're, they're just guidelines. But remember, the whole time that we're looking at this, remember, it's all about keeping it simple. It's not about this elaborate um, thing. And it might be that when you first do it, you feel uncomfortable and they feel uncomfortable. You know, Jill admitted that she was a little bit nervous about it. Uh, that's actually okay. That's kind of normal. That's human nature. So, okay, so the first one, talk. Uh, because discipleship happens in the context of relationship, you've got to talk to them. You've got to start off by talking. And, and you don't just start off by saying, oh, hi, come on, sit down, open your Bible to Genesis chapter 1. Uh, that, that would be kind of a weird kind of scenario. But you, 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 you find out how they're weak. I've got some questions here for you. You start off with, how is your day going so far? Now, you want to make sure that there's nothing happening in their life that you need to know about. If, if their dog died last night, uh, you don't want to start off by, with an irrelevant question. So just start off with a general, how's your day going so far? And they'll tell you anything that's significant. Uh, then I like to ask, how's, how's the last week been? What kind of things have you done? You know, what, what, what was the weekend like? All that sort of stuff. And they might recount some things. Um, and then I might even follow up with a, a question. If we'd been meeting for a little while, I might follow up with a question. How did it go last week with that test? How did it go last week with that fight that you had with your brother? Uh, you know, what, what, what are some of the things we talked about last week? How, how is that all going for you? And then what I'd like to move to is, uh, is find out how they're doing in their Christian walk. Now, um, so I'll say, you know, how are you doing in your Christian life? You know what the answer I, I almost always get when I ask anyone, how are you doing in your Christian life? I haven't had that many devotions this week. And somehow we, th we think that the whole of our Christian life is about the regularity of how many times we read our Bible. Now, reading your Bible is really important. But how did you go resisting sin? How did you go with giving, your, giving money? How did you go with interacting with your family? How did you go with... You know, how did you go living a godly life this week? And part of living a godly life will be praying and reading your scriptures. But that's not the only measure of how you're doing in your, your Christian life. And so we've got to, we've got to start encourage people to, to talk about the whole of the Christian life, not just the, the frequency that you read your Bible. Okay, so, uh, okay, so you talk to them. Uh, this this is actually this is often the, the most enjoyable time. I, I you know you do have you do have weird scenarios where you know it's hard to get them to talk or you're talking about stuff you think I have no idea. Uh, but uh, let's just do a little bit of troubleshooting. Tell me what can you do if they don't talk? 
if you're sitting there and you say, How, how's your day? Good. How's your week so far? Good. How did you go on the test last week? Good. Was my three questions are gone. Uh, uh, did you see the Hobbit movie? Uh, you know. So, so what are you going to do? What What are some things you can do if uh, they don't talk? You share. You answer. Okay, that's 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 great. So, so how how are you going in your week? Good. Oh, good. Anything Anything different about this week? No. Well, I had a good I had a good week. I did this. Um, yeah, that, that's great. So add in some, you can actually add in some extra stuff. What was good about it? I know when my kids sit down and at bedtime, and yeah. the question I asked was, what was your favorite part of the day? Yeah, yeah. And they'll answer that. I mean, sometimes I'll get answers like, bacon. <laughs> but, <it's laughs> but, yeah. yeah. And that's actually, thank you, that's actually a really good point, it, is we've got to kind of get used to asking uh, questions that don't just have the answer good or bad to it. Uh, uh, so some open-ended questions. So, you know, especially once you get to know them a little bit better, it's easier because you'll ask them things like, you know, wh what's happening with this and, yeah. Just a suggestion, sometimes they need a little bit of time to answer the question. Yeah. You know, especially if you're introverted, if you yeah. ask them the question, you might have to wait a full 30 seconds before they answer. Yeah. <laughs> you will. And yeah. If you, if you kind of try and fill the airspace there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and, uh, and it's it's okay. It's okay to let them have thinking time, and 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 they're they're you're leading it, so you're conscious of everything. They're not conscious of everything. They're relaxed and they're sitting there, and uh, they're okay. So um, yes, thank you. That's helpful. Yeah. Uh, what I find often is the case is that if a student isn't talking with you, it's partly because they feel like they have to have some level. Yeah. And there is very little that I find will help a young person to open up more than talking as if you're their age with a level of intelligence behind it. I mean, they say, my week was good. It's like, seriously, that's all you have to say about your week? Is there are ways that you could respond to that that kind of calls it out in a way that doesn't feel like you're judging as much as, come on. I mean, I think yeah. we both know that that's not the way that your week happens. And I know that there's more going Yeah, and I think I think when you get to know them more, you might have the uh, you might have that re kind of relationship where you can give them a push. We've got to be very careful to not make the environment a, a, a scary one for them or a threatening one. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and and the 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 phrase which I gave you early, tell me about it. Uh, there's no yes or no to that. Tell me about it. How'd you go on the test? Good. Tell me about the test. Tell me about it. Um, yep. And when we share, uh, I think we need to be honest because our week wasn't perfect either. Yeah. Tell them about our challenges. Yeah. Yeah. The reality of Christian life. Yeah. And in one sense, uh, and again, for those who are parents, it's easy if it, you think this way. Um, you, as parents, you know you don't share everything with your kids. Uh, but but you, do, you do share things that you think, okay, I know that if I share this, this is going to be helpful for them. And, um, and, and sometimes it's good to say, you know, this is, this is what it was like for me. Or, you know what, I didn't read my Bible at all this week. I was traveling or I was on holidays or it just didn't happen or um, but this week's going to be different and yeah. I'm reaching here for um, how this is discussion is going and to me um, to build a relationship it has to almost be equal and so if you ask them about what their week was like a piece of that is for you to share how your week was like. Yeah. Would that be, I mean it's not a it's not a yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny because you're going to find that young people, the average young person, doesn't have a lot of people to talk to, as in, like, like us. And um, and I find a lot of the young people I talk to will just talk 
they'll talk about themselves and, and they wouldn't have a clue what has happened to me this way. And I'm actually okay with that because I think it's actually, but over time, the more they get to know me, they might say, oh, what happened with that? And, and suddenly they might have this relationship where they want to know a little bit more about me. Now, well, let's move on a little bit from this, but I, I just want to say, I want to say two things. One is um, you can do some things that are, that make it easy for them. And, and, and a lot of the time, you want them to be comfortable and you want it to be easy. You don't want it to be stressful. You want it to be enjoyable. So as chaplain, I get you know, court-ordered chaplain meetings. So the principal says, you've got to go see the chaplain. And, uh, or you've got to meet with the chaplain for four weeks. And um, I actually love it when that happens. Because it, not, no kidding, every single time that's happened, at the end of the four weeks, they say, can we keep doing this? And, uh, and so one girl comes in, she sits down, sent by the principal. So I'm asking her some questions and she's really not, uh, not really answering. I said, okay, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you a, I'm gonna ask you a question and you've gotta give me an answer from one to 10. So one's really bad, 10's really good or one, yeah, whatever. And so, so I started going through the questions and she goes, seven? And, and after a while she goes, this is really fun. And, uh, <laughs> and she really enjoyed it and, and she warmed up and, uh, but again, it was like, I made it very clear to her, I'm really glad you're here in my office and I want to talk to you. And uh, The other thing is, I met with a girl uh, every, every morning for a year and she would sit there like this. She wouldn't talk very much. She'd yawn. You know, we'd do all this. We'd talk, study Bible, pray. She looked as boy, and I'm thinking, gosh, you know, I asked her if she, you know, to meet once a week. I'm thinking, gosh, does she actually want to do this? And, uh, you know, after six months, you know, still going and, it's, and, and we finish up one of the booklets that we're doing. She says, uh, so can I choose the next booklet? And because uh, she, you know, I had a selection. And, and she, she never, she always showed up and she seemed to like it, but that her personality was quiet and she didn't want to really talk other than sit and be in my company and study the Bible. And, and that's actually okay. Let if, if they're quiet and they want to do that, let them do it and give them, give them time to warm up to you. Okay, let's move on. Read the Bible. Uh, this is the bit that people often get nervous about. What do I actually do when I study the Bible with them? Now, uh, um, let me just grab a book. Okay. What, one thing you can do when you start off with this that makes it really easy is you can find a, a youth Bible study booklet and you can just go through the studies, one study at a week, uh, of a week. And so uh, you, you sit down and you say, okay, you know, talk, how's everything going? Great, okay, uh, grab your booklet and let's, let's go to uh, our Bible study. And you just go through a Bible study with them. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a nice, easy way to ease into it and to warm up to the whole idea of discipling someone. Uh, I, I often, uh, even, I've been doing this for, for years and years and years, uh, but I still will start with a kid I don't know, I've never met them, or they sent here by the principal. I might choose a book that I think that's useful to them, and the first time I meet with them for the first six weeks, that's what we'll do. And then after that, I might do something else. But uh, let me just say one thing about that, and that is not everything that goes into print is worthy of your money. And, uh, and we, we think that it's in print, it must be okay. Uh, make sure that you get things recommended to you. Make sure that you go through the material yourself. Make sure that so much youth material out there doesn't use the Bible at all. It's all discussion and inter interaction and clever stuff. Uh, and then a little bubble verse thrown in at the end. Make sure you're actually doing a Bible study with them. But here's, here's the, the second option on your sheet. Uh, as I said earlier, again, this is the scenario where you say, you ask a question, you go, oh, I don't know. I actually, I don't know the answer to that. And that's actually okay, and it's good for them to, to see you be honest and not bluff your way through an answer. Uh, but the second way to do it is to, um, just to open the Bible and to work through a section of a Bible at a time. So often when I meet with someone, I'll say, okay, well, let's work through you know, one chapter a week or a section of a chapter a week. I'll, I'll, often Bibles will divide up uh, the chapters. And so here, here, is, here are three questions that I'll often do when we'll read the Bible. Um, now, let me just say, 
it's helpful to get them to read the Bible. I, I almost always make them read the Bible. If they're not very comfortable, what a perfect environment to get comfortable to be reading the Bible. They're across from one person who really likes them and wants to be with them. Uh, they can trip up on their words. They can not know how to pronounce those funky names and you're going to be okay with that. And, and say that to them. You know, if you're uncomfortable with reading the Bible, you know, um, I'm just going to get you to read a little bit and I'll read, a, I'll read a little bit. But I'd like you to get comfortable. This is the place to do it. But I'd read through the Bible and I'd ask them, okay, what stood out in the passage for, from you? And it can be anything. Oh, that's weird that that happened. Or that's a funny word or whatever they want to say. What stood out? to you from the passage and then uh, I would go through and teach them some stuff notice how Paul says this about Timothy isn't that interesting how they had this deep relationship and notice how teaching the scriptures was really important to Paul that's why we meet to teach the scripture to learn the scriptures and, and teach them what is in the passage it means you're going to have to do a little bit of preparation you might need to read the passage beforehand and know what you're going to teach and the last thing is uh, and David mentioned this uh, you've got to apply what you read so you ask, what challenges does this passage give you for the week ahead? What, what are some things that you can think about? What are some things you can do? Um, obvious thing is make sure you have a readable, modern Bible version. It, it can be helpful to have a spare Bible with you. Uh, young people, you can tell them to do the same thing over and over 50 weeks in a row and they're going to forget the 51st week to do it. So, you know, bring your Bible and there are going to be weeks when they don't bring their Bible. So... Uh, have a Bible available. Uh, and the third option is basically the same thing, but doing it with a topic from the scriptures. So a young person might say to you, I don't know how God can allow suffering in this world. You know, all these things are happening. So you might think, let's do a couple of weeks on the, the topic of suffering. So you're going to go home, do some research, look up the Bible verses, and look at different verses in scripture. Uh, but, but, but the essential part of all of this is that you open the scriptures. You know, I hear of people say they got together and they ate pizza Well, that's and talked. Well, that's nice for a social thing, but that's not what discipleship is. You're teaching them to follow Jesus like you follow Jesus. Um, so, uh, you know, and some people get together and they study a Christian book. We got together and we read The Shack. Well, that's a book club. That's a good thing to do. That's fine. But that's not this. That's not discipling them, uh, teaching them to follow Jesus and teaching them God's word. Now, before we move on to our last one, which is prayer, uh, does, anyone want to ha does anyone have any uh, uh, questions or comments about reading the Bible? Right. Yes. Back to Isaiah. Yes. Uh, so we don't have to read that, but we'll, you've done this a lot. What are some good Okay, uh, I have a whole stack of stuff, and it, this uh, this is I've got this booklet here. I brought enough for uh, a free copy for each one, and they're all different topics that are there. You know, there's um, there's one starting out in the Christian faith. There's there's four some books on the Book of Luke. Uh, so I'm going to give each of you one of these, and you can and I hope I've brought enough. Certainly. U.S. Customs was not impressed <laughs> when I brought 50. They, I, I said they have free. I, they, I said I have free sample. I have sam commercial samples. They said how many? I said 50, and they went, that's too many. <laughs> so, so uh, I can't take them back. So please, um, uh, uh, please afterwards we'll have them out, and you, you go up and you just pick one you like. If if you end up the last person at the table and you're a guy, and the last book is on young women, then ask someone to swap with you. Yes, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah. So let me encourage you to look at those. But but uh, you need to identify. You know, Dave uh, Wright could help you with some um, good uh, websites that that sell good resources. Uh, again, a lot of it is asking people what have you used that you like. Uh, quite often, I'll say to people, what have you used that you like, um, and and and. And quite often you can also find free samples of those things online. So you look it up and they'll, sh they'll give you uh, one lesson plan or, or that sort of stuff. Uh, that was a convenient question though. Any other comments on studying the Bible? Now, not, let me just say, 
after lunch, we're actually going to kind of role play this. So we're going to give you a sheet where you're going to sit down and you're going to, not for very long, but you're going to, with one other person, do the participant and the leader thing. Yeah, so you'll get a little bit of a practice. Oh, you've got the sheets. Oh, yeah, you've got the sheets. Already. So we'll do that after lunch. You'll have a, I, a chance to have a little bit of a, a practice of this. Yes, Wiss. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very non threatening question. Yeah. If you predict threatening, you can say, what's your highest and lowest? Yeah. Cranks up the level. But just one high point and one low point in the last week, and that gives them permission to both be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And sometimes my son doesn't want to talk when I start with him. Yeah. So I'll start with my husband and we go around the dinner table and do what was our room. Yeah. And by the end, he wants to share. Yeah, so, yeah. So, you know, yeah. he thought of something as other people were talking. So if yeah. you get that non talker, yeah. uh, that's sometimes a way to draw them out. Yeah, excellent. Yes, creative openers, uh, you know, sharing questions are, are really helpful. they be told by their parents or their pastor that are oh, you going to stop meeting meet yeah. you yeah or 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 would i initiate it by um just saying i'd like to talk to you yep what's the expectations um that it, they would have because this yeah feels to me a little bit like their ex i'm setting myself to be their teacher as opposed yeah. to a mutual yeah relationship yeah. Where we learn together. Kind of. You know, Stephen is going to talk a little bit about that this afternoon, about connecting the first point of contact. Um, you're going to find that it's different every time. So, for example, a girl at my church uh, says to me, oh, you're from Australia. I, I want to go to Australia sometimes. So she's talking all about that. And uh, she's quite happily, uh, you know, talking about Australia. And so at, I was thinking, you know, I don't know this girl that well. She seems like a really lovely girl. And, uh, and she wants to talk. And she wants to talk to an adult. So I said to her, you know, uh, what are you doing this week? Why don't we have coffee this week? And let's talk more. Yeah, that'd be great. And so, so we went and uh, went to the coffee shop and talked more. And so, so uh, sorry, we get, go to the coffee shop. We get a drink and we sit down. And I'm expecting the first question to be about Australia. At first, the first thing she says is, there's a girl at school that doesn't like me. Now, right away, she, she wants to know, is there any adults that are interested in me? And so she talked to me about Australia. Is Julie interested in me? And so, so I initiated that. Now, I, when she said, yes, I'd like to have coffee, I actually contacted her mum and said, I invited your daughter to coffee because we were chatting at church. And I knew that I knew the mother, I knew that it would be okay with her. But but a lot of the time there are so, and then there's the other girls who get sent to the chaplain's office and court ordered four weeks, you know, meet with Julie. Uh, there are all sorts of scenarios. It might be that if it doesn't I'm thinking of our coffee hours and the chance yeah. that we get to be around the youth. Yeah. And I gotta be honest and say there's not too many times young adults come up to me and say, can I like your car? Or, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's mostly making conversation with them as opposed to yeah, yeah. kind of open door, she left you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, st I'm still trying to reach for it. Do I wait yeah. for that to happen or how you do you self-initiate it? Yeah, you know, and, and Stephen will cover this in a, a whole session this afternoon about that. But uh, I, if I, what you need to do is have your radar out of, I want to, I want to connect with young people. And so I'm, I'm looking and I'm looking for opportunities. And uh, so, so the young adults at your church, I would, I would uh, 
be be known to be the person that approaches them to say, hey, how's your week going? Or you're new here, I haven't met you before, I don't know your name, I'm, I've been here at church for a long time, what brought you here? Uh, you be known as the person that, oh, yeah, he knows us, he knows our name, he always talks to us, he's always always welcoming, uh, you know. And, and then when I said something, he, the next week he remembered and he said, how did your exam go? You were really worried about it. Uh, you've got to have this whole demeanour of, I really want to engage with young people. Um, so with this girl, Emily, I, I could have not invited her for coffee and we would never have talked about anything deep other than, you like Australia. So, yeah, we had a comment over here. What I have found, with a couple of my parishioners, I find out what activities the kids are in. For instance, uh, one girl was in a play, mm. so I went to the play. Yeah. And then that next Sunday, I pushed her and, and we talked about the play. Yeah, yeah. Um, because in that show, that I took the time to find out she was actually yeah. in it, and I cared to know that she was, and that she had a lead part, and et cetera. Yeah. And we were able to talk about that. And that just, that helped to open up the, the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And now she knows that I'm someone who is actually interested in her life and yeah. that I'm someone she can come and talk to. Yeah, yeah. And we've got to get past the superficial morning tea conversation. Like, we've got to, yeah. we've got to let them know, oh, we're not just here to say hello to you on Sunday morning. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, okay, we had one over just, here. Just real quick, I think the whole process needs to start with intentional prayer on your part mm. um, so that you give God a chance to direct you to the person you should be and yeah. not meeting with. Yeah, and, and, and to not steal Stephen's thunder. I know he's going to actually talk about that. So, yeah, Good. absolutely. There was a question way, or a comment way in the back as well. Oh, yeah. 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 And she said, like, if you have a kid that gets off the school bus and says, everybody on that bus hates me. Yeah. Don't say, no, they don't. Yeah. Because then you're calling them a liar. Pretty much. Yeah. And she said, just say, everybody on the bus hates you. And then maybe they'll say, well, maybe not Joey, you know. Yeah, yeah. Or something to that effect. Yeah. Not to try to change their feelings. Say that they're wrong. Yeah. No. And that, that comes out, out, out of the genuine interest in them, doesn't it? Uh, and, and again, I, I always like the, the, the phrase, tell me about that. Tell me what happened. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Um, okay, we've got to move on because I'm getting the signal. Okay, let me just, uh, let me just let's finish off by uh, looking at the first time you meet with someone. Uh, the first time you meet with someone can often be a little bit awkward. Um, but you, you, when you meet, uh, I'll actually say quite often to girls, uh, would you, I'll talk to them and, and I'll say, would you like to meet regularly to talk and to study the Bible? And they always say yes. In fact, Emily, who I had coffee with that week, who said, you know, there's a girl at school that doesn't like me. I said, it was summertime. I said, would you like to meet every week, you know, through the summer? And she said, yes. And I said, when are you free? And she said, every day. <laughs> I said, okay, well, we can't do every day. Uh, but we met every, every week through the summer. Um, so, but I, but I said, well, w if we meet, this is what we'll do. We're going to talk about stuff, we're going to pray, and we're going to read the Bible together. And, and she knew right away. So, so be very clear at the beginning uh, what you're going to do when you get together with them. Okay, but he, here's just very quickly, I'm going to whip through this. Uh, so you, a lot of it you can just read. Uh, your first time you meet with them, uh, here are some things you can do. Ask them their story. Tell them about, ask them, this is all introduction. Uh, this is, uh, find out about them, their church experience. Uh, you might get them to give the, their testimony. I think that can be helpful if they're a Christian. Um, ask them when was the times in their faith that was the strongest, when were they the weakest in their faith. I love to ask the question uh, to, to clarify the gospel if you were to die today and stand before God and he was to ask you, why should I let you into my heaven? What are you going to say? And uh, it's really interesting. Girls who have grown up in Christian homes and Christian education and youth group and everything good, 
they get to that question and go, oh, I've tried to be really good. Uh, and then you explain the gospel and you explain the cross and how uh, Christ takes our sin and he, he gives us his righteousness. And, and, then, and, and I've had so many girls go, oh, gosh, I, I've heard that all my life. And, yeah, I, 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 that, I believe that. That's, that's what I believe. And I often think of them as, if you can call them this, uh, Christians who, who don't know the gospel yet or haven't come to understand the gospel yet. But as soon as they hear it, they go, yep, that's exactly what I believe. I've heard about Jesus dying on the cross. I now get why he did it. Uh, yes, we've got to be quick, though, because I'm getting these you know, anxious kind of... Uh, okay, you know what? Uh, we'll have we'll have time breaks. Uh, if there's any extra things, uh, we can talk at, at breaks. Um, uh, make sure that when you tell people the gospel, that you make sure that you don't just tell them the first bit: Jesus died for your sins. Make sure you tell them the second bit, which is equally important: that He gives us His His righteousness. He takes our sin; we take His righteousness. So we stand before God uh, perfect and clean. And uh, for a young person, that's actually really important. Second thing, tell them that when you meet together, that you're going to talk, read the Bible, pray. That's your goal, to make them strong in the faith. Thirdly, uh, ask them to make a commitment to meeting regularly. Young people know what commitment is. They do it for their sporting teams and their musicals and all sorts of stuff. They can, they, they, the thing is that with the church, we somehow think that we can't ask for commitment. And this is the place where we need to ask for commitment. Come every week. You be here every week. I'll be here every week. And, and make sure you're consistent. Uh, don't let... Don't. Am I really getting the push? No, no, no. Oh. We, we had you had blank screen behind you, and I wasn't sure that was intentional. Oh, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, five minutes. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, be consistent. A young person really needs you to be consistent. If you forget to show up and have coffee with them, that is just one of the worst things you can do. Uh, and if you do that, make sure you fix it and say, I'm so sorry, uh, but, but be consistent. Don't do that. Um, and, and even if they're inconsistent, even if they forget or they're late, make sure that you're always there. Um, now, it's, it's helpful to ask them, is there anything you'd like to do as well as talk, study the Bible and pray. Uh, so they may say, look, I, I need to be kept accountable over a particular sin. Yes, that's a good thing. Uh, I don't really know my Old Testament. Could, we, could you help me understand? Yes, I'd love to do that. But if they say things like, I just, I'm a little bit lonely and so I just want someone to go to the movies with me and hang out. And Well, that's not what it's, that's not the whole point of what we're doing. Now, uh, what we do is in the context of relationship, so we will naturally do social things with them. We, it, just, it just will happen. Uh, and so uh, they'll say, come to my musical, or can, you know, can you come to my place and my mum's going to cook you dinner, or that sort of stuff. It's really good to do the extra social things, but make sure when you meet with them for that time that it's focused on what you're, you're doing. Um. Okay, set a time and a day that you must meet regu regularly. And again... Uh, young people are notorious for forgetting. I even have a university girl that I have to email her the day before. And she says, don't, you've got to remind me. I email her the day before to say, don't forget 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, uh, and then in, in the first meeting, I would still read a short Bible passage and pray with them. Uh, I like Hebrews 10, uh, 9 to 25, about meeting together is a good one. Uh, and then the last one is that... Decide how long you're going to meet. So with this girl, Emily, we met for the summer. When the summer was over, she had a group that she was a part of where she was taken care of, and I knew that. Um, here's two reasons why I'd say. First of all is uh, set a time limit because uh, sometimes you start out and it feels awkward and you think, oh, this is not working, uh, and you want to give up. But if you say, let's meet for six weeks... By the end of six weeks, you might go, this is fantastic. I can't believe I considered giving this up. Uh, so it pushes you to, to persevere. But it also means that if it really isn't working, if it really, it's just not working, um, you, you actually have an opportunity to say, okay, we've met for six weeks. What would you like to do? Would you like to keep meeting? I'd, I'd love to keep meeting with you. I'm quite happy to commit. But, but I want you to be able to 
say whether you'd like to keep doing it. And they might, they might say, I actually don't want to keep meeting. Now, quite often they say they do, uh, but, but it's good to have that. So set a time limit. Now, uh, oh, we've run out of time for this. Mistakes that people make discipling, you are all literate. So I will rely on you to read that. Um, oh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. Very quickly, very quickly. Um, there are mistakes that people make in discipling and, uh, and you are going to make mistakes. I guarantee you, you're going to go out and you're going to make mistakes. We all have. I'm really good at doing this. And when I started, I was really bad at it. Uh, but I kept doing it because it was important. Uh, so, so first mistake is all talk, no Bible. Now, I think for the girls in particular, there's going to be more of a difficulty. And, uh, and I have plenty of girls that can talk and talk and talk. Um, but remember, discipleship, discipleship is not merely friendship. It's, it's deeper than that. And, so, uh, and you're not their therapist. Um, so uh, make sure that your talk time uh, does have a Christian focus. And, and make sure your talk time is just, the whole time is not just for talking. Now, let, let me just say there are young people who just really need to talk. And sometimes you've got to just let them talk a lot. And so you might need to say, you know what, I met with them for an hour and a half. But they have so much they need to talk about. I might just, I might just pop in and, and say hello to them another time and give them some more opportunity to talk. Um, uh, so... It, it might even mean it might even be that in early on they have so much they're dealing with they need to talk a lot, and that, that as they get into the rhythm of meeting with you every week they'll get they'll they'll be able to talk less. Um, uh, second thing is all Bible no relationship. So you know you arrive, sit down, open your Bible, look at the study, and uh, and the young person's thinking, oh this person was just so mean to me just then and I just want to cry, but I have to do the Bible study. Um, so that, that's a mistake as well. It's, it, we teach them in the context of relationship. Third thing is uh, random meeting times. Disaster. If you're meeting with them on Monday and the next week you're meeting on Thursday and then you meet them, and you say, oh, my, busy, my schedule's so busy, I've got to spit you in all over the place or whatever. Uh, oh, my goodness. You, to get a young person to school on, to the same time to school every day, it's like... How can you forget what time you're supposed to be at school? You were at school that same day yesterday. But, uh, oh, no, that's right, yeah, it's, it's this time. So uh, consistent, consistent, consistent. Uh, they need patterns. Um, uh, make sure you erase that too busy thing. If they say they're too busy or you're too busy, you're too busy to disciple someone, you're too busy. So, um, uh, but, yeah, be consistent. Find the best time and uh, I actually, I like to meet once a week because uh, once a week is, has a good rhythm to it and it's, it's you get, you have a long-term relationship, okay. Uh, and then um, uh, there are times where I'll meet with someone every two weeks. So some, some university girls I might, might meet with every two weeks, uh, but I like every week. If you can do every week, try and do every week. Last one, no time limit. This is a mistake. Uh, you, you actually have a life as well, uh, and they have other things they need to do. So, so make sure that uh, you, you have a time limit. A, an hour and a half, I think, is, is good. Let me, just, uh, let me just finish by saying I'm, I, I, I can't stress to you enough how important you are because what you have inside you, the message of the gospel, uh, is so precious. And young people are so desperate to have a young, a, an older person come into their life and talk to them. And, and, and people are just not doing it. And, and we've been a generation that has done nothing for so long. Let's just do something. Let's just do something. So uh, be courageous and know that what you're doing is what God wants you to do and go out and do it.